So, my dear Cancer, Sun in Virgo, giving the light to the Moon in Cancer. And since we're going to the right, I will place the 7th Major Arcana here and the ninth Major Arcana, the Hermit, here. And we're going to your full Moon again, right? So, it's really important that we understand the path that we're taking for six months to the new moon, for six months to the full moon, and we do feel that. And so the ninth and the seventh major arcana creates the 16. 16 in the tarot is the tower, and that's Mars. So sometimes Mars comes and takes things away, but it's good because sometimes we have a hard time letting go, and so Mars does the job. And here we see Luca Pacioli from Salvador Dali Taro, here Alistair Crawley. We see the chariot, the success in bringing this love out into the world. This is the emotional success. Now what's fascinating, both of them have Roman numbers. And we see here the five unites both of you, the hierophant, the priest, the guru, the spiritual messenger. And here, Virgo has the Emperor, and you have, of course, the Moon, the High Priestess here. And so it's really kind of interesting when I look at what kind of numbers they used, right, in their deck. And a lot of the old decks have the Roman numbers, and it's very interesting because then there is a mix. It's not just a seven, it's a five plus Two. it's a five plus four and there is a deeper message in that right and I need to acknowledge that right otherwise why am I doing these readings I want to understand all of it so the emotional intelligence is left when we calculate the 16 together and so you come out a new you and that's always important for you to understand we go through cycles right we go through evolution and as such, we learn. Now here in Alistair Crowley, the hermit looks like this, and you see that he is definitely facing the left. Now, when you see a card facing the left, you think, oh, he's going to the past, but it's not that. To the left, introverted new moon. To the right, extroverted full moon. And when we look at the card, we see to the left, but when we become the card, we see, oh wow, it's actually that which he has learned as a soul. He can experience or bring that out as a human, because that's what the left and the right means. The right human, the left soul. And so you can see that all these cards are very mysterious and I could go on and on and on and sometimes I have to stop myself because I go way too far into the explanation again and again. Now for Virgo I created mountain pose up at the mountain. He has understood in the nine the completion of the path and he has learned his lesson and he is in this completion of past and present is looking at each other and in the center is the now are the chakras for you i have created somehow similar energy but here we see the high lounge the ashwasanchal and asana the horse and you become the horse and here i created a light and a dark suit right because it's kind of interesting when we understand that there is still duality in this world and maybe I will also create here a dark and a light suit. I'm not sure yet. I have to think about it. Now Virgo is ruled by Mercury and Mercury is the information, is the magician in the tarot and is the language. Now the Sun in Virgo shows us that we really want to work on ourselves, that we really want to come to a completion and that we want to show this to the people around us. And as such, that's really important. You are ruled by the moon and now the moon in your sign, it's almost like the moon is at home 
he feels comfortable here, right? He feels like he is recognized and the moon are your feelings and your subconscious. And as such, that's just here the message today, sun and moon. But if we include all the other planets where they're stationed at right now, this moment doesn't exist only once a year. This moment exists maybe only once in your life. You are the queen of cups. And as such, she and Alistair Crowley, you are the healer. You are disappearing here in the water and you become water and water in this way, steam. And as such, you are really a strong healer. And so if your birthday is between June 10th and July 12th, then is she your court card, right? So important for you to understand that the dates of the court cards are different than the dates when the sun enters the zodiac sign. So you might be a mix and as such you maybe want to look at the reading before or after because the court card then is there for you. You are the fourth zodiac sign and as such then of course connected to the fourth house of home and family and you really protect the family. You really are loving and kind. You are the one that takes care of everybody. And so Cancer is really the healer. We always say Cancer is the big healer. Back to the last reading where you had Leo Sun giving Cancer Moon the light. Let the sun shine in is the very bright message through Leo's Sun. And I always look if we have a reoccurring card coming up because that's when I know that that is still talking to you. And I don't see a reoccurring card. Maybe I will when I look a little bit more closer. But it looks like you have... Ah, yeah. It's always like, oh, no, there's none. And then at the end moment, I want to give up. I'm like, oh, yeah, there it is. Right. And so good. So we can begin the reading. Right. And talk on on to actually the eight of air. And we will see what the eight of air wants to tell you here again, because the eight of air because the Eight of Air is Jupiter in Gemini, and Gemini is before you, and it was reading before you. So maybe you have a little Gemini energy within you. Maybe you are not the Queen of Cups. Maybe you are the Knight of Swords, right? Have a look. So we begin the reading, but before that, I want to introduce you to a new deck. And it's the Star Seeds. She's Austrian Birgit Fischer. And these are star people. And at first I didn't want to use the deck because I wanted to get acquainted with it first myself. And I realized right away that these cards really talked clearly that they want to be included in the reading. And so I picked a card for you and you got Kasum Fatia. Now I just want you to look at it, feel it, what comes up for you and then I will give you the meaning of these people. They exist not in physical form the way we think. They exist on a different plane or dimension we also say and have a look at their eyes. And they're very beautiful because I have them outside for those two and a half days the moon is in Cancer. And I have gotten the information from them very clearly. Um, and they showed me very powerful that they working with us, right? And so Kasum Fatia is the healing power of your chakras which you want to let go of all the things that happened in your past then it's letting you know that today 
you particularly should look after yourself. Now, these kind of star people have lost their home. And you are the fourth house of home, right? And so they understand that you really love your home. They understand that you are wanting to create a safe haven at home. And that's what they bring to you. They bring you healing in every matter of the home issues and so they actually can be split in three types which is children parents and then the wise ones they only have three chakras and their blood is blue and not red and they live quite thousands and thousands of years and they do not die but when they decide to move on that's when they decide that they let go of their physical form as here the Kasum Fatia. And you see how the orange here in front of their mouth, it's kind of like they don't speak, they send messages, right? And in such, they are very clear in what kind of pictures they send you. They have here um, stones, precious stones in their forehead. And that's the way they actually communicate and have, of course, also different colors. But that's their communication tool. So it's clear, right? You get here the healer. You get here the healer also of people who have lost their home. And so they understand you very beautifully. And so it's important for you to connect with them and if you don't feel connected with them you can literally just say no that's not for me i don't feel them it's not something i would connect with and that's okay yeah good we begin the reading on the position of the queen of cups because she is of course as the fourth zodiac sign the queen of cups the number four and you get right away the fool and that's the planet uranus and uranus is the new beginning is being able to say i start fresh and so you have a 40 a four and a zero and it's almost like something in you is saying i want to begin something new and the four is the stability in the way you live your life, right? The stability that is also coming now through the four here in the hermit. And the four is either the four elements or the fourth chakra or the emperor. So you decide which of them works for you. But there is something that you want to come to an end to. And want to be able to say, yes, I begin a new journey with myself, with my home. I make sure that I have everything I need. And so this is a very beautiful message, right, that begins the reading. Then we start here to look at the High Priestess. And the High Priestess is the intuition. And she is bringing you the Five of Cups. Here in the Hermetic Tarot, it's black and white because she is as a high priest is always working in between the black and the white, the right and the left, the duality. And the Five of Cups is Mars in Scorpio. And Mars, again, is that 16 that came up here with these two together. And Mars is saying, well, something needs to go so that you can begin new, right? That's what the zero is. There is, it's like letting go. And so the five and the two is the seven, the emotional intelligence to move on, to say, I am ready to move on. And you see the pentagram facing down to this cup. You have the four, right? The squareness in maybe your emotions there is something that is blocking you mars 
and then Scorpio, the depth of it, and it's pointing here at this, right? And of course they always say it's the sign of the beast, but for me it's more like you need to let go. Mars in Scorpio, it's like let go, there is a sadness that you can let go, and the seven here is coming with her together. Then from your deck comes the star, and the star is Aquarius. And what's really interesting is that Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, and Pluto is going to go into Aquarius for 20 years at the end of November. So the 17, we have the 7 inside the emotional intelligence, and the 10, which is the Wheel of Fortune, which is Jupiter. And so you're playing with the idea to be a star. The star facing down doesn't mean that the star is less valuable. It's just that you maybe need to let go of something that's not working. And so the 8 comes from the 17. The 8 and the 5 is the 13. A big transformation because that's Scorpio, that's death. And so you can begin in your subconscious to see that something is literally saying yes, let go. Right? Now the 13, when we calculate together, we get a 4 and that's again the heart, the emperor, or the four elements. The 13 and the 2 is the 15. Now we have Capricorn, we have the devil, we have the sign of the beast. Or, in general, you need to let go of something that's just not working anymore. And then the 6 is left, self-love is coming here to you. So you see so many numbers are coming up here in the way we calculate this together right and you can actually in the end create your own calculation mix right and understand the story there and so the six is left and that's why you need to really love yourself coming into self-love the six for example and the four is a ten a new cycle can begin <laughs> then we want to see what the Mother Peace Taurus brings the Three of Discs to the right. And the Three of Discs to the right means then you can work within your community because this is Mars in Capricorn. Mars in Scorpio, Mars in Capricorn. So to get away from this, <coughs> you see the triangle facing down and here's the triangle facing up. You want to work with others, with the new community, the 17 and the 3 is the 20. Pluto in Aquarius is bringing that kind of new way of working with others because Pluto, which was Scorpio, was 15 years in Capricorn. So you learning that something is talking to you, you're going to find your community. And now all together, the 8, and the 5, the 13, plus the 2, the 15, and the 3, the 18, the subconscious, the moon. The moon is letting you know deep down you need to understand. Your intuition is letting you know what to do next. And so you learn clearly something here. The 18 turns into a 9, and the 9 is then Virgo helping you to come into a completion, helping you to come into the nine. And so learn from Virgo, right? And you can see the new beginning is going quite strong. Then we're going to look into the chariot. And the chariot is bringing you here the queen of swords. She's a Libra. And the dates for all the court cards is down below if you want to have a look, right? That's where then recognize that certain dates work for your friend or not, right? Because these are the court cards and this is, of course, the soul that is speaking. And so here we have the seven and the seven. She's the seventh court card and a seven seven portal letting you know that you are on the right track if you connect with a Libra. She will help you to cut off the ego of the people that maybe block you to be emotionally successful. To be emotionally successful means you need to connect with who you are deep within. And that's what Virgo is going to bring to you. 
Then comes here the Eight of Swords, and that's the card that came last time up as well, the Eight of Air. And so here you have the doubt, something that says, well, I'm not sure if I can be so successful, the Eight and the Seven is the Fifteen. You doubting yourself, you cut off from source, or you make yourself dependent on the way you think. Maybe these thoughts don't even come from you. Maybe they come from your family. And so the 15, again, Capricorn, right? And the 15 plus the 7 is the 22. The fool is a zero, but it's the 22nd major arcana. And so here Uranus is letting you know let go of this type of thinking. You're good enough, right? Even though you have a castle here and you're looking at this beautiful butterfly in your um, chest, right? It's kind of like there's this transformation. You need to understand that here the 15 turns into a 6 and the 6 and the 7 is the 13 again the transformation the transformation is here you need to let go of something so that you can move on what comes here from the mother piece sorrow the four of wands which is venus in aries to the left and to the left it's here pointing at the beautiful queen of swords she is libra libra is ruled by venus Venus in Aries. Aries is the opposite sign of Libra. And so as such, there is an interesting combination happening because the seven and the four is the 11. A portal appears where you can liberate. And the 11 I leave, the 11th of August or the 8th of November. Now we also have the seven all together, right? we had, let's say, the 22. If I calculate the 22 together, we have a four, four portal. But I don't like to calculate the 22 together. So we can start like this. Here, the eight and the seven, that's the 15. And the 15 is letting you know, again, that's Capricorn. So overcome this attachment to this type of thinking, right? And so the 15 and the 4 is the 19. Then the sun comes, sun in Virgo, and letting you know, then you can liberate yourself. Then you have the strength to get away. Because here you have a 7-7, seven, seven, right? And I understand that then the 19 is a 10. And the 10, again, allows you to make you realize that you have a new cycle that is beginning here. And that's what it's all about, right? Now, the seven and the four, right, is the 11. The 11 is left. So you can either way create this, again, station here in many different directions. But here, just these three cards is the 15 and the four is the 19. The sun comes up and is letting you know you can do it. You can be emotionally successful. Then we look at the moon. And the moon is the subconscious, your feelings. And here you get the river, the spirit of the river, the movement towards adventure, the 50. The 5 and the 0. We have the 18 from the moon. And that's calculated together the nine, right? So this is Pisces, and Pisces is opposite of Virgo. So the moon is letting you know, integrate the river because Pisces, the fish, is in the river. And take this new adventure of the five, the Hierophant, that is in your card, the spiritual teacher that is coming, and the two, which is the high priestess, right? Understand that the seven is put together with those two. So the nine and the five is the 14. That's Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is, of course, temperance. 14, right? Learning to give and take 
and give and take and give and take. The five is left. Then comes from your deck here the Prince of Wands. And the Prince of Wands is actually Leo. And Leo came last time. Uh, Let the sunshine in is the very bright message through Leo's sun. And so have a look at this. It's important that you see that the message comes through as a five. Five, because it's the fifth zodiac sign, he comes after you. So maybe you have also rather him as a court card and not the queen of cups, right? Have a look down below. I have listed all the dates for the court cards. So you have a 5-5 five, five portal. And remember, the 9 gives itself up as a number. So I don't need to calculate that together. But at first here, we had the 14 as a number. And the 14 is the 10, the Wheel of Fortune. And the 4, again, the Emperor creates, of course, then the 5, the Messenger, the Hierophant, the Taurus energy that is teaching you to become a spiritual teacher in the 5-5 five, five portal. What is coming here from the Mother Peace Tarot? The star again to the right. And the star to the right is Aquarius. Now this is again very interesting. Aquarius and Leo are opposite of each other. Aquarius gives light to the full moon in Leo. And Leo gives the light to the full moon in Aquarius. So the 8 and here the 55. Interesting when I calculate it all together I get the 18. And the 18 is the subconscious, is the moon. Then you have an 1818 portal here. And again, understand the portals. Double numbers, triple numbers are more powerful, are more clear. And I go with the chakra system. One times a number, it's like kind of the first chakra, right? It's kind of like you understanding what that means. The two times the five is you become creative. Three times it means that you become powerful, etc. And so, unless you're using the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, there the one is the crown and the ten is in the feet. So the eight and the fifty-five is here, right? Because the nine has given itself up. But if I calculate the nine and the eight, I get the seventeen, the star. The 17 comes back again and is letting you know, use the information that you got here and become a spiritual teacher, apparently. That's why you have to begin new. And then the sun. The sun in Virgo is bringing you fury, is bringing you bushfires, is bringing you the number 10. And the 10, when we calculate the 19 together, is the 1010 portal. And the 1010 portal is saying, well, you got to see that sometimes energies are intense. Now here, with the three of wands, which is sun in Aries. Now Aries is coming here again. The three of wands and the three of pentacles is a 33. And a 33 is the secret brotherhood's degree of mastery. Now here the 10 and the 3 is the 13, again a transformation. Important that you understand this transformation is saying, well, you got to understand what this fire does within you, what the sun wants to tell you, because the sun is always the being that you have become in showing from deep within the light and radiate it out. Right, so the 10, 10, but also the 10 and the 3, the 13, and the 4 is left. The 4 and the 10 is the 14. That's Sagittarius, also a fire sign. What comes here from the mother piece, the Ace of Swords, facing down. So there is a thought coming down. There's an energy coming down, letting you know that somehow you need to take action. But not that it's burning you, right? Be careful. Now, you had the Queen of Swords. She works with the Ace of Swords. You had twice Aquarius. 
right? So it's an 8-8 eight, eight portal here, plus the 8 of swords, 3 times the 8. And the 5 and the 3 was also an 8. And really understand something here. It's really clear that Aquarius is wanting to tell you something. Now the 8 of swords and the ace of swords are 9 swords. Then we move from this feeling like you blocking yourself mentally into a nightmare. That something in your life is a nightmare. Something is intense and something wants to come down. And it's the meditation. She sits here, meditates, gets the sword, gets the thought. And you need to understand that. Because the 13 and the 1 is the 14. The 14 plus the 10 is then the 24. And we get the 6, self-love. So Virgo is letting you know, become here acquainted with what's going on here. And then love yourself. That's the message. And that's why you begin new. That's why you have the fool. That's why you need to completely understand what is Uranus doing right now in your chart. Where is it in your chart? Where is it affecting you? Which house, right? And all together, one more time, the 10 and the 10 is the 20, the 23, the 24, the six is left. And so self-love. Love yourself as much as you can because it is important to begin new with self-love. The six and the four, right, is then, of course, the ten. A new cycle can begin. And in that new cycle, you're going to discover who you want to become. And this message is coming through them, right? You're learning more and more to understand that you support it in what you want to do and in how you want to live your life. And as such, you put it out there and you have help, right? You have a Leo, you have a Libra, you have an Aquarius, right? Twice. And you have, of course, Major Arcana here the fool and as another major arcana of course the star right aquarius and you want to be a star i think you want to be a healing star as such just go for it and do it so i hope i see you in the next reading because the sun is going to be in libra the queen of swords is here until then i thank you so much for being with me namaste